Hello, my name is Chris McKay. I represent Facilities Engineering. We're the company that designed, built, and installed your bridge cranes and your fall arrest systems. In this session, we're going to be discussing the uh, do's and don'ts of safe uh, crane operation. We want to remember that whatever we're doing, we're, we're starting all of our motions slowly. We're stopping all of our motions slowly. Uh, we want to anticipate and want to adjust for load, what's called load drift. Uh, load drift is any time a, a, a hoist, hoist a movement comes to a stop, um, you will still have some, some inertia carrying that load. Uh, so want to anticipate for that. All of the bridge cranes in your facility are variable frequency driven uh, hoist trolleys and bridges. So that, what that means is, is they are designed to try to eliminate load drift by ramping down and ramping up the speeds. You want to anticipate that in your lift plan, which I will discuss later. You always want to make sure that we handle a load in a safe manner with the area free of personnel and other obstructions. Let me go over the do's first. So we're gonna go over the positive things that we wanna do when operating, safely operating a bridge crane. First of all, you wanna know the weight of what you're lifting. Most of the time you will find on the item that you're lifting, you'll find a, a verified weight via either a packing slip or may, might be even uh, right on the carton. You may also be familiar, it might be on, a, for example, some sort of vehicle or vehicle part you may be using frequently. So you just want to be checking the weight of your load and comparing that to the capacity of your crane and making sure you have enough crane to handle your load. Well, we want to make vertical lifts. What that means is, is we always want to be centered over our lift. Uh, we want the hook centered directly over our lift. Um, and as you lift, you may need to make adjustments in, your, uh, in where the hoist and the trolley uh, or the bridge is. You want to keep that centered. Uh, you want to know where you're going, so you want to have a lift plan. I want to start in area A and I'm going to finish in area B. I'm going to make sure that area is free of personnel and uh, any obstacles. You want to know your crane, be familiar with its operation. It's what I call look, listen, and feel. You're going to, you're going to be familiar with it by observing it daily, by listening to any, any odd noises. You want to be aware of everything and be prepared. So part of knowing uh, the area whether, and making it free of personnel or obstacles, um, you wanna have a plan. So if something goes wrong, you wanna know what you're gonna be doing. You wanna check your hoist brakes. So basically you're gonna run the hoist up and run it down and make sure that it's, there's no movement in it and that it stops when you, when you let go of the button. If you're working with another person and you have a lift plan, you want to make sure that you, you have clear communication. In other words, that you're, you're uh, either using hand signals or other gestures that both of you agree upon before doing the lift. And again, you only want to accept any signals or any verbal uh, communication from one person and one person only. You want to always, always obey a stop command. That could be someone outside the area that sees something that maybe you don't see. And in that event, you want to hit your emergency stop button or hit the emergency uh, cutoff switch, uh, which is located on the wall. Now some of the don'ts. You, always, you, you do not want to lift beyond your rated capacity. That was part of knowing the weight of what you're lifting and the capacity of your bridge crane. You do not want to tow or side pull any loads. So for example, I was talking, I just mentioned a moment ago, we're talking about making sure your hook is always centered on your lift and you don't want it at an angle. That would involve maybe a side pull action, which would, when the load comes off of the ground, will cause it to swing. We don't want load swing. Um, in the case of the bridge, if the bridge is off center, you'd be, you would be towing it. You would be picking it and pulling it. And again, that would introduce what we call load swing. We do not want that. You do not want to carry any loads over personnel. And that's part of your lift plan to make sure I am gonna lift, I'm gonna start in area A, I'm going to area B, I want to make sure that area is clear. We do not want to bypass any safety devices that are on the bridge crane, any e-stops or any, any other items that are on the, 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 the bridge crane is equipped with. We don't want to get in any pinch points. We do not want to get between the load, uh, anywhere between the load and any other obstacles in the room. 
So that's another reason to plan. Uh, you want to make sure you're staying out of the, out of obstacles way. You move the you move your load uh, around obstacles and again keep the load away from any obstacles and stay out from between the obstacle and the and the load. We do not use limit switches as a stop. Uh, your crane is equipped is with an upper limit switch. Um, you do test it daily. That's only to be used as a, as emergency or as a backup. You want to stop and control your load at all times. Do not use end stops as a brake. The end stops are not designed to stop the, the crane, especially under load. You could cause uh, severe damage to the crane or even injury. Of course, we do not ride the crane. It is not designed or intended to lift personnel. Uh, we do not leave uh, loads unattended up in the air or hooked up. We don't leave them unattended. Someone is to monitor the load at all times. We do not uh, jog the crane. And what that is, is that's reversing the, the motion in any direction at any time. We do not remove any tag outs to operate tagged out cranes. For example, if your cutoff switch is tagged out, we do not take the tag off and operate that crane ever. Some of the frequently asked questions are, can I run two motions at the same time? You may, as long as it's safe to do so. Safety comes first, and we want to be aware of that at all times. So you may operate two, 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 two directions at the same time, two motions at the same time. How high do I carry the load? You carry the load as low as possible. You do not want to, to unnecessarily raise the load uh, at a height, which is not uh, necessary to avoid any obstacles. You want to keep the load as low as possible so that in an event, you can bring it down more quickly. Can I guide the load with my hands? Yes, you may guide the load with your hands as long as it's safe to do so. Again, being aware of where you're at, where any potential obstacles are. Remember what I said, we do not want to get into any pinch points between a load and an obstacle. We want to make sure we're very aware. Should you walk forward or backwards? You should walk forward whenever possible. You don't want to end up tripping and possibly you know, getting into a bad situation where you're going to get injured. Some of the housekeeping items, inspection and service logs. You want to maintain uh, daily inspection reports and you want to keep those on file in possibly a three ring binder or record it uh, digitally uh, by taking a picture of that and storing it digitally. Safety equipment. When working under a bridge crane, you want to wear the proper uh, protective personal equipment like a hard hat. Um, and you want to wear a safety vest. And I understand that United Airlines does, does employ the use of safety vests. Um, cranes and accessories. So in some instances, you have uh, frequently used rigging equipment. You want to make sure that um, you know where it's at and that your rigging equipment is in good uh, working order. Your work area. Work areas often change uh, from day to day. And we want to make sure that we're aware of everything and everyone that's in that work area. Uh, personnel, obstructions, uh, any noise, excessive noise or lighting conditions that might prevent you from either seeing what you're doing very clearly or hearing uh, directions from another person that you're working with on the load. And remember some, a few things on closing. If it's not safe, don't do it. Check your upper limit switch daily as part of your pre-operational inspection. Never carry loads over people and stay out of pitch points. Thank you.